We are searching. We are scrolling. But we are not talking. It's time for that to change. All right, come on, let's stand together for the reading of God's Word this morning. Good morning, everybody. Anybody glad to be in church today? Hey, just because you can, high five two or three people and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I want to welcome our online campus. So thankful that we can have church with you wherever you're watching from, whether you're live or watching it back later. And I want to invite everyone here to go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3 is towards the beginning of your Bible. Go past Genesis and Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers and you'll find, you'll find Joshua there. But as you're doing that, I want to welcome our online campus. So thankful that you're joining with us for church today. We want you to know that we love you. And if you don't have a home church, you do now. You belong right here at the Avenue Church. And just want to say hello to everyone worshiping with us. Come on, Avenue. Help me welcome our online campus today. Make some noise for them. We love y'all thankful to be a part of what God is doing. Today, we're concluding our series that we've been in called Real Talk. Anybody been enjoying this series, Real Talk? Real Talk. We're concluding it with something you wanted to hear more about, and just so fitting of what this day represents for our church, and you'll hear more about it, but you wanted to hear more about miracles. And so we're going to talk about miracles today, all right? Miracles. Let let me give you a backdrop before we read um, Joshua chapter 3. So God has raised up Moses, you kind of saw it in the video just a minute ago, to to lead the children of Israel out of slavery, out of bondage, to their promised land. Okay, it's a a long story, that's a really short version, okay? And and through several different things that happened, they were there in like a year and a half or two, but then um, some things happened where they... How many of you know people just know how to mess things up? Well, they did that, (laughs) and so they actually took him a lot longer, and Moses actually did something that cost him from not being allowed to actually go into the promised land. He's going to lead them to it, and and then leads, taps Joshua on the shoulder, and Joshua is going to be the one to take them over into the promised land. The the only problem to the promise is that there is a situation called the Jordan River at flood stage, and also a city is already on their promised land. That's a problem. And some of y'all are thinking, we'll just cross over the river. Well, it's easy to say in 2024 when we have bridges and such. But we're talking about millions of people at a flooding river getting your stuff across. And it's it's a problem. And so this is where we are in Joshua chapter 3. They're trying to get to their miracle. They're trying to get to their blessing. And they're trying to get to their promise. There's just something in front of it. And they're about to see a miracle take place. Anybody want to see a miracle take place? You see a miracle take place. So that's, that's the backdrop as we start in verse 1 of chapter 3 of the book of Joshua. And it says this, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from that place. And I ain't going to say it because if I say it, you're going to think, well, pastor's cussing ass and I ain't doing it. I'm just not going to do it. Just save it, all right? From that place, it, it, it is pronounced how you think it is. And they went to the Jordan River. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. I don't care what you say, that's funny. Come on, look at the religious person next to you and say, lighten up, buttercup, lighten up. I'm just saying out loud what everybody here is already thinking. (laughs) And if you say you wasn't thinking it, then I guess you're more holy than the rest of us, liar. (laughs) And they went to the Jordan River where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. And when you see, he says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Come on, somebody say, follow the presence. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go 
and stand in the river. If you're taking notes, I hope you are. Write this down. The title of the message today is The Miracle Mark. The Miracle Mark. Come on, look at somebody around you and say, Welcome to the Miracle Mark. Welcome. Come on online, talk to me. Welcome to the miracle mark. Let's pray together and like we do every, every Sunday, let's pray for another church. God, we're so grateful for today. God, thank you for what you've already been doing at the Avenue Church and we're just so grateful that we can worship together in this house and many joining with us online today. Thank you for all you've done at your church. And God, we stand here giving you thanks and giving you praise for who you are. You are awesome, God. You are. You are our Lord you are everything to us and we are nothing without you god i thank you for the church thank you for the church around the world and god we just take a moment and lift up a church that's dear to us and has believed in us all throughout the years and god we pray for arrowhead church today with pastor ben shown and sarah and their kids and lord we're just so grateful for what they do um, in the community and out throughout this region and i pray that you would bless them and, and at their campuses today and lord will you let souls be saved and lives changed God, I pray that you would strengthen them, encourage them. God, will you bless Pastor Ben and Sarah and their kids and their leadership and their staff and, Lord, every person that belongs at Arrowhead. I pray that you would pour out a fresh anointing upon them to continue to be a light in a dark world, Lord. Encourage them today. Lord, will you show up in such a unique way in their services today, God? Lord, thank you for this place, what you're doing in this house and God, I thank you for what you're going to do. We open our hearts as we open your word. God, will you change people's lives today in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say a big amen. 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 You may be seated. Welcome to the miracle mark. Come on, somebody say the miracle mark. Miracle. Now listen, this is a participation church. Y'all talk back to me today. All right, I preach a whole lot better when y'all talk to me. All right, so somebody say the miracle mark. Miracle. The miracle mark. I, I said that and still some of y'all just stared at me like I'm an idiot. Slap your neighbor and say, wake up, bro. Wake up. Wake up. The miracle mark. Come on online. Talk to me. The miracle. The miracle mark. The Olympics has started, and I just want to go ahead and just say shame on them. You may like what I'm about to say. You may not like what I'm about to say. But anybody who would try to jab and mock the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is no friend to me. And now the... The Olympics committee have tried to come on the back side of it and say, well, we weren't mocking the Lord's Supper, and, and, and we were talking about the Greek goddess, and uh, there's a Greek word for all that. It's called bullcrap. And so w whenever you line people up and, and it looks just like the Lord's Supper, and you put somebody in the middle of it, you're making a mockery of what's holy. And we don't condone that. And I'm thankful for the billions of Christians who are upset today. Rightly so. Rightly so. I've come to tell you that Jesus is still king. And I pray that God uses this situation to grab the attention of hearts and lives of people all over the world. That there is only one way to heaven. Only one way to God. And his name is King Jesus. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. Some of y'all are thinking, well, does that mean we boycott the Olympics? Well, you do what you want to do. There, there are some men and women of God who have poured sweat and tears to be where they are, and they're not happy with what they did. And, and so I, I'm thankful for the men and women of God. This is supposed to be a time when the world comes together and celebrates, and, and I pray that God uses this. I pray God uses this in such an, such an awesome way. And so with that being said, I think it's so fascinating what these athletes can do with, with the body that God has given them. It's, it really is amazing that the physical ability of some of these, like, they're, it's, they're freaks. What in the world? I'm like, how in the world are you that strong? How are you that fast? How do you do that? Like, that's just not even, that's just not even. Also, hey, there's a new sport in the Olympics, breakdancing. That was awesome. I want to see that one. <laughs> thought that was sweet. But one of, one of the, the things, the events that take place is the long jump. And um, I, I don't know if you can see this really well from where you are, but what we have measured out here is the record for the long jump in the world. 
starting from here, one, not the triple jump, one, one leap all the way. To here, 29.3 feet, one jump. It's pretty fascinating to watch. This person will take off and, and they'll leap and they're like walking, running through air and they'll take off and they'll, and they'll leap through the air and at some point they got to tuck because they just want their feet to hit this sand because that's where they'll judge the mark. And so it's, it's an impressive thing. And so I think that record dates all the way back to 1991 when, when he set that, set that record. But that, here, here you go. Put it in perspective. About right, about right here is a three-pointer on a basketball court. To put it in perspective. If you don't think it's very far, go to one of the elementary schools around you and go stand at half court and say, Jump. <laughs> have fun with that I was going to ask for some volunteers but I didn't want to embarrass anybody and I'm definitely not going to do it but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty impressive it's, a, it's really a miracle you think about it. it's crazy how God has created our bodies to, to be able to do that I'm preaching a message today about taking a jump a step of faith that will propel us towards our miracle towards God's blessings and towards God's provision in our lives that will forever mark us. Come on, Avenue. I need you to understand this. Supernatural miracles do not just happen. They are always in response to actions that we take in the natural. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell them this is the miracle mark. This is the miracle mark. The, the miracle mark. How, just, just out of curiosity, how many of you have promises from God that you want to see fulfilled? How many of you would love to achieve greatness in life? So everybody with their hand down, you want to be a loser. <laughs> Let me ask again, how many of you would love to achieve greatness in life? Okay, look around, keep your hand up, keep your hand up. Look, if somebody around you doesn't have their hand up, just pray for them. So what's wrong with you? Like, what? <laughs> I want my life to be awful. <laughs> how many of you need God to work a miracle in your life? But let's be honest, sometimes it can just seem impossible. Fair to say? I need to give you three things this morning about taking a jump, a step of faith that will propel us towards our miracle, the miracle mark. Number one, write this down. Y'all with me, church? Come on, somebody say preach. preach. Number one, momentum will be the super to your natural after. Somebody shout after. After you take a step of faith. Momentum will be the super to your natural after you take a step of faith. Joshua 3, 14 through 17 says, So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan River, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan River and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle. Somebody say in the middle. Amen. In the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Once the priest stepped out it paved the way for the rest to follow in other words it was their momentum that helped the others get across they stepped out in the natural and god responded with the supernatural come on can you imagine this moment god gave joshua a command and joshua gave them instructions on what to do and as soon as the priests stepped out in faith into a flooding river as soon as their feet hit the water the water began to pile up come on now like i bet their adrenaline had to be like next level next level with this adrenaline flowing as they step into this flooding river do we do we take the risk and step in the river or do we stay where it's safe 
Because we can always blame it on the flood. We, we can always blame it on the mere fact that people could die. M moms and dads could die. Children could die if God doesn't respond. The miracle mark. When you're about to compete in any competition, like, like the long jump, there's a chemical called ATP that your body releases and produces. It's, it's actually worth about six seconds. It's like adrenaline. And it's only available in the beginning. It's why sometimes you'll, you'll, see, you'll see these athletes start hitting their legs and they'll take a step back and they'll take a deep breath. They're, they're trying to learn when to capitalize on that ATP. Listen, this ATP, this adrenaline, it helps you gain an advantage on your opponents who do not use their ATP efficiently and get a better result in a jump or a race or in a game. And in the first few seconds, it's the jumper's momentum that carries them so far. It is in any wonder why hell is after your momentum. Because your momentum is what's going to give you an advantage over the enemy of your faith that will say you can't do it. Amen. See, momentum is measured by the force that it takes to stop something. The force that it takes to stop something. So let me give you a couple of things to do to make sure that you maintain momentum and not lose it. Y'all ready, church? So here's the first thing within this first point that you need to do to maintain momentum. And you've got to at some point learn how to destroy excuses. Destroy excuses. Come on, look at your neighbor with the stank eye and say, I think he's talking about you today. So you find yourself wanting to receive all that God has for your life. Like the Israelites on the edge of the Jordan River. But you're letting the enemy of your faith speak to you about how you can't do it. How you'll never make it. How you will not be successful in life. How you'll never get to your miracle. How you cannot be blessed. See, it's easy to let the enemy of your faith create doubt in your minds. Am Am I talking to the right people? Come on, Avenue. God is wanting to do something great, so we cannot let excuses cause us to miss our miracle. Well, what if I don't jump as far? Well, listen, you're not getting anywhere by not jumping. And what, what, do, I mean by, what do I mean by this? For me, it was, what if we leave Cincinnati and we fail as pastors? What if, what if we fail at planting a church? That's, that's what I mean by taking the jump. And today, somebody say today. God has provided the vision, he's provided the place, and he's provided the plans for the future building of the Avenue Church. But, but what if people don't commit to giving to make it happen? Come on, touch your neighbor and say, it's time to destroy excuses. Let, let me make it personal with some excuses that cause us to lose momentum. Can I make it personal? Which in turn causes us to, to miss the, our miracle marks. It's things like, hey, God is calling you to be an amazing woman of God. And your excuse is, yeah, but I'm a single mom. The plan is God wants to use you to be a financial contributor in the kingdom of God. And our excuse is, well, I'm not wealthy and I'm not a millionaire. The, the plan is God, is God has called you to serve in the church and give of your time and your talent and your treasure and your excuses, but I'm too old and there's no place for me. And your excuses, but I'm too young and nobody will take me seriously. Come on, touch them and tell them, destroy excuses. Destroy excuses. The plan is God wants to use you to, to teach and to lead and, and your excuse, but, but I'm a high school dropout. The plan is God wants to heal your marriage and God wants to save your family and the excuse is, but pastor, you don't understand how bad it really is. The plan is God is calling you to get involved and start using the gifts and talents that he's given you, but the excuse is, but I've messed up too many times before. The, the plan is God is wanting you to get committed to his call on your life, but the excuses looks like I've got too many addictions in my life that make me too comfortable. 
I've come to tell the Avenue Church, it's time for this house to make a decision to go after your miracle and break through the excuses because excuses will take you captive. You've got to break through the excuses that are trying to define your life if you want to make a jump and get to your miracle. And God is saying to us today, I've called you to do great things. I've called you with a plan and a purpose. I want to use you. I've created you for greatness and I have a purpose for you. Just make sure you don't miss God's miracles and his blessings because you hid behind excuses. Oh, it's time to break through your excuses. It's time to start running towards your miracle. Do not focus on a deep, flooding river. Focus on what God is calling you to do. I've come to tell you that there may be a battle ahead, but God has allowed it just to give you a victory, to prove his faithfulness, to show off his power, and to show off his glory in your life. Do not let excuses dictate your life. I need you to get up out of your seat, find three people and tell them you need to start le learning how to destroy excuses. Destroy, 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 destroy excuses. Come on online, talk to me. Destroy excuses. Come on, look at somebody else and say, I don't want to hear about it. question is, do you have some people in your life who will hold you accountable? Who will look at you when you start giving your excuses and say, hey, I need you to shut up with all that. Come on, look at somebody and say, you better shut your filthy mouth. Let me, let me say it like this. You will not be rewarded just for what you do. You will be rewarded for what you are called of God to do. Somebody shout, no more excuses. Momentum will be the super to your natural after you take a step of faith. Here's another way to maintain momentum. Y'all ready? Are we okay? We're destroying excuses. Here's a second one. You've got to learn how to replace spectating with worship. Pastor, you like to talk about worship a lot. You better know it. That's what you're supposed to be. I've, I mentioned this several weeks ago, and, 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 and don't, get, don't get used to the fact that I'm, I, listen, I will keep coming back to this scripture because this scripture will change your life. In 2 Chronicles 20, you'll find a story about a time when Judah was on the verge of being attacked and destroyed. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Mayanites came out to fight against Jehoshaphat and all of Judah. But God told them, be encouraged, you will not have to fight this battle. So Jehoshaphat did not go out and find the strongest men. Come on, squeeze your neighbor's arm and just say, I need to know if you're strong or not. I don't really, I, <laughs> then look at him and say, I don't really care. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. I don't, I don't really care. He didn't look out. He didn't look for the strongest ones. No, no. The, the, those who are mighty in battle. No, no. He said, where are my praisers? Put my praisers out front and let them begin to worship God. And in verse 21, it says, they began to sing. They gave thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Verse 22, and the moment they began to shout and praise, the Lord set an ambush against those armies and they were defeated and God's people were victorious. Glorious. There was a time when we stepped out in faith to start the Avenue Church that the enemy came in to try and stop it. He even sent agents into the church, Come on. I ain't lying, Come on. to try and break it apart. But we decided to praise God in the battle. 
And I've come to tell somebody, stop trying to find the strength within yourself to fight your battles. Start praising God in them and allow him to give you victory over them. Oh, oh I, need to, I need you to tell somebody, to slap your neighbor and say, get out of the stands and get in the game. Get out of the stands and get in the game. I don't know who I'm talking to right here, but you may be here today going through some stuff and you need a blessing and you need a breakthrough and you need a miracle. Cool. Why don't you make yourself some room right now and just begin to worship? Oh, because it's your praise that precedes your victory. Somebody needs to pick up some momentum for what you're going through because it's your praise that will get you victory. It's your praise that gets your mind off your problem and help you to focus on your... Oh, I wish you'd take about five seconds and give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Psalm 34 verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let I don't know why you're sitting down. Let us exalt his name together. Your praise magnifies your maker and minimizes your mountain. Your praise helps you see how big your God is and reminds you of how small your enemy is. I wish I could find some safe folk up in here who have been through some stuff and you realize there is victory in your praise. Oh, praise him for your miracle. Praise him for your breakthrough. Praise him for your blessing. Some of you are one praise away from gaining momentum. You need to get your miracle. Your praise will cause you to see how awesome God is and remind you that with him all things are possible. Oh, I wish I had a church full of safe folk. Oh, who believe that God is still in the miracle working business? Why don't you take yourself about a 10 second praise break? Because you know that all things are possible. Woo! Hallelujah. I need you to get up. I need you to get up. High five your whole zip code and tell them praisers make things possible. Praisers, praisers make things possible. Come on, slap somebody else and say, no spectating in this place, baby. No spectating. No spectating in this place. you in church you might as well praise him today you're in church you might as well take a minute for his faithfulness for his power for his blessings you might as well praise him for a minute hallelujah sit down for me When they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. I know it may not look good. I mean, I, I know my family may be going through it. I know my health may not look good. I know my finances may be in shambles. I know my family and marriage may be on the rocks. But I know that if I praise God, he will show up and help me through the storm and through the lonely night and through the battle each and every time. If I praise him, he'll show up in the valley. If I praise him, he'll silence the voice of the enemy that's trying to attack no weapon formed against me shall prosper so I will lift high the name of Jesus Woo! sit down I'm feeling preachy today huh
how, how, how far will you go? How high will you jump? Will, will you reach your miracle? Will you find your purpose? Will, will you reach your full potential? Will you experience breakthrough in life? Will, will you get to the miracle mark? Momentum will be the super to the, your natural after you take a step of faith. You've got to understand that praise is not a response. Your praise is your responsibility and your declaration mm, that God is greater than anything you'll ever face. If you're waiting to praise God until after your miracle, you'll be waiting a long time. Let's, let's move on. So we talk about excuses, talk about your worship. And, and there's something else that, that, that people who are in the jump, long jump will do. <clears throat> they'll try to, you'll, you'll see them like sometimes they'll hit their legs. And you'll see, depending on what's going on in the stands or the arena at the time, like, sometimes they try to get the crowd pumped up. And you'll see them start doing one of these actions. Or you'll see them turn around and go, All right, stop, stop. See, in, in, in the other service, I did that, and everybody's like, huh. I'm like, this is called participation. Huh. Huh. So, and what's funny, like, white people, y'all should have the slow clap down pat, because white people can't keep rhythm, and if we start you on a, the reason why the slow clap was invented is from white people trying to stay on rhythm, and they just sped up because we can't stay on rhythm. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Every clap with white people starts off on rhythm, and all of a sudden we get faster, and you got this section doing one rhythm, and that section, it's just awful. But so if you don't have rhythm, slow clap is, is your thing, because you can speed up. So you'll see them start to do that and try to get the crowd pumped up. Yeah. And they're getting fired up, right? Okay, stop it. They're, they're, getting, they're getting the crowd like they're feeding, they're feeding off of that, that energy, that excitement. It fires them up. Why am I telling you this? Here's one more way to maintain momentum. It's the third one and number one. You've got to learn how to check your surroundings. Back in chapter 1, Joshua lets the leaders know that in three days they would cross the Jordan River and take the land that the Lord has provided as their promised land. There were just some special arrangements regarding some of the land. I don't have time to talk about all that. And when Joshua gave them the instructions, here was their reply to Joshua. In verse 16 of chapter 1, they say, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them, we will put to death. Now, those are some time. And then they say this to him. Joshua, only be strong and courageous. Now, if I don't fire you up, I don't know what will. They're looking at their leader and say, be strong and courageous. See, Joshua was surrounded by people who had his back. Come on, church, I need you to get this right here. Good momentum, somebody needs to write this down. Good momentum comes from you being surrounded by the right people. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 1 says that we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses. To the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Since this does describe a sporting event where people are cheering the players on, let me paint this picture for you. You are going to have people cheering for you, and you'll have people criticizing you. 
Come on, see this, church. In life, you're going to have people cheering for you, and you're going to have people criticizing you. You don't think Joshua remembers this? Joshua, along with Caleb and 10 other people, are sent out to spy out the promised land. And the Bible says that 10 of the 12 come back with a negative, critical, complaining report. But Joshua and Caleb came back with a positive report, cheering on the plans of God. One of the reasons why God picked Joshua to take the lead after Moses and lead his people into the promised land is because Joshua cheered on the plans of God instead of criticizing them. We had people tell us, you're crazy for leaving Cincinnati. Where ministry was comfortable, where you've been successful. Pastor Justin, you're dumb for doing this. Come on, church. If you think that criticism is going to stop because you're following after God's plans, you are sadly mistaken. And at some point, you're going to have to decide who you're going to listen to. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, check your surroundings. Check your surroundings. Check your surroundings. uh, I'm I'm, I'm excited right here. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are, are, Are you going to be obedient to God? and be encouraged by your cheer section or are you going to miss your miracle all because you listened to negative, critical, no vision people? Newsflash Avenue. There are people who step in a river to part the waters and there are people who stay on the shore and miss their miracle. See, it's easy to criticize people from the safe side of the riverbank. But I'm so thankful that we had some people in our lives that were pulling for us, saying, you you can do this. We believe in you. God's going to help you. It's going to be amazing. The Avenue Church would not exist if we didn't have people saying, we believe in you. You're going to rock East Tennessee for the glory of God. Hey, Avenue Church, I've had people to cheer me on, and now it's your pastor's turn to cheer you on. I've come to tell you, take the limits off what God wants to do right here in your life today. You're becoming a movement in this region. I know God has done some amazing and awesome and things already but we haven't seen anything yet God's about to accelerate the growth at the Avenue Church and what he does through the Avenue we're gaining momentum our parking lot is being built the new building is on the way we can do this with man it's impossible but with God all things are possible oh come on somebody give God a shout of praise Can, can I show you something? Just in one week, I, I, I didn't. Do y'all have those pictures of some? Is that a thumbs? I can't. I saw, okay, cool. <laughs> Just show you some things that's been done over the past couple of days. This is right out here over behind this part of the building where they're digging in the parking the new the new parking lot. There, there's the parameters of it. Come on, somebody. That's back behind here, clearing all that land. Come on now. Look at that. Come on, somebody. Come on, give God praise for that. Amen. Yeah, that's all right. Go ahead and praise him. Hey, God's been faithful. Can I make it personal for you? Come on, why don't you cheer cheer somebody on around you this morning? I need you to get up on your feet and find three people and tell them you're going to do great things. A miracle is on your way. Don't you give up. Don't quit. Take the limits off to what God can and will do in your life. Come on, Romans 8, 31. If God is for you, then who can be against you? Oh, come on. Somebody believe God for the supernatural. Let's grab a hold of momentum so we can hit the miracle mark. Let's go, Avenue. Somebody shout, let's hit the mark. Let's hit the mark. Let's hit the mark. Momentum will be the super to your natural after you take a step of faith. Anybody having fun? I love God's word. It's so good. 
Hey, I, that was number one. <laughs> Got two more points. But that was the bulk of it. Don't sweat. Don't worry. Sorry. Sorry. We're, we're gaining momentum this morning because we're destroying excuses. We're participating in worship. We're, we're checking our surroundings. Here's a second one. Write this down. Number two, you'll never receive the reward until you're willing to take the risk. You'll never receive the reward until you're willing to take the risk. What's the goal in the Olympics? To come in fourth? I don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody goes, you know what? I want to go to the Olympics so I can lose. I just hope I can make it to the Olympics and maybe my, my time will pop up on the screen and I can wave at my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> you play to win. The, the goal is to win gold. Like that's, you want to be able to hold that bling in your mouth and be like, ching. You play to win. You run to win. You jump to win. You swim to win. You, you do it all. You do it to win. And you know, that's... It reminds me of Philippians chapter 3 when Paul says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize that God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The goal is to make it from here to heaven. That's the goal. It would be a, a shame for you to hear God's word. You're in the house of God today. You're in the house of God. Spoiler alert, that doesn't mean we're done. Usually when, we, when you hear that sound, you're like, oh, we're wrapping up. You start nesting with your purse. And you're, I got 22 more minutes. <clears throat> what, what, a, what, a, what a shame it would be for you to be in the house of God, hearing the word of God, in the presence of God, around the people of God, all for you to miss heaven. You know what breaks my heart? Is that there are churches full of those people. My, one of my prayers is that every person that is connected to the Avenue Church makes it to heaven. And, and my heart breaks because you want know you want to know why if you miss heaven you want to know the reason Here, here's the reason it's because you love the world too much hmm? you, you love yourself too much you love the things of the world too much and you've got your mind and your heart fixated on the here and now when eternity is not about here and now eternity is for, like, forever like And I, I want to I stop right here in point number two. I've got a number three coming, but I, I want to stop right here at point number two and, and give all of us a moment to be able to position ourselves to win the prize. That's the goal. To press on towards the prize, the goal to win the prize of which God has called us to heaven in Christ Jesus. You, you want to you know why you would miss heaven is because you, you don't have a relationship with God. You can know about him. You can know where to find him. You can know how to get to him. But if you don't have a relationship with him, you don't think the people on that Olympic committee knows about God? Why do you think they mock the savior of the world? 
they know who Jesus is. Doesn't mean they have a relationship with him. So I, I, want, I want to, in this, in this moment, right here, right now, you may have never had a relationship with God. Or maybe because of sin or life, just whatever, like you, you've drifted away from God. I want to I give you an opportunity to pray right now. Right here where you're sitting, right here, right now. To position yourself to receive the prize. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> if, if that's you, you be honest with yourself and honest with, with me, honest with God. Like you're in God's house, in God's presence, around the people of God. How crazy would it be for you to miss heaven and end up in hell because you didn't have a relationship with the Lord? So before we go any further in this service, I'm going to count to three. And if, if you'd say, Pastor Justin, include me in that prayer. I need God in my life. I want to win that prize. I don't want to miss an eternity in heaven. I don't want to end up in hell. When I get to three, I just... Just so I know who I'm praying with right there where you're sitting. I just want you to lift that hand up just so I know. Come on online. There may be somebody online as well. One. Come on, don't miss your miracle moment. Two. All over this house. If that's you and you want to join in this prayer. Three, just lift that hand up. Just lift that hand up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Every person that raised their hand, I want you to pray this with me from your heart and from your mouth. Avenue, let's all join in together so they know that we're with them. I want you to say, God, I need you. Thank you for loving me. I need you in my life. I'm nothing without you. Thank you for preparing a place for me. For the prize of heaven that I can have. And it's only through your son, Jesus. So Jesus, I confess, you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And from this moment forward, no matter what, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you because you love me and you're my savior in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout an amen right there. If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step of making a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below and a pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know that we're stronger together, everyone matters, and you belong here.